Let's review the plot summary of Sophocles' Antigone. In the introduction to Antigone, Thebes has been invaded by Argos. During the battle, two of Oedipus' sons died fighting on opposite sides, Eteocles for Thebes and Polynices for Argos. Creon, their uncle, emerges as the new leader of Thebes. The play opens with Oedipus' two daughters, Antigone and Ismene, discussing the deaths of their brothers. In the rising action of the play, Antigone is enraged at Creon's proclamation that Polynices is not to receive a burial or funeral rites, while Eteocles is to be given an honorable funeral. Creon has also decreed that anyone who interferes with this law will be publicly stoned to death. Antigone claims that Creon's law is unjust, since the gods decree that every mortal must be given a proper funeral. She tells Ismene that she plans to bury their brother's body and give him his funeral rites, even if she's punished. Ismene refuses to help, fearing Creon's punishment. She reminds Antigone that their family has suffered enough tragedy. Antigone disagrees, claiming not to care if she's punished. She would welcome death in exchange for standing up for her beliefs. Guards catch Antigone when she revisits the grave she's prepared for her brother. Brought before Creon, she freely admits what she's done and welcomes punishment. She defends her actions by claiming she has honored the gods whose laws are more important than mortal laws. Creon is enraged at her defiance and confirms her death sentence, even though she's engaged to his son, Heman. Ismene lies to Creon, claiming to be her sister's accomplice. Creon declares that he'll have them both killed, but Antigone refutes Ismene's story. Heman tells Creon that he loves him, but disagrees with Antigone's punishment, as does most of Thebes, who view Antigone as a hero and martyr. They argue heatedly. Then Heman disowns Creon and warns him that Antigone's death will result in another death. Antigone laments that she'll never wed and that she'll die alone, friendless, and without help. Creon has her led away to be entombed alive in a cave. The blind prophet Tiresias arrives and warns Creon that he saw in a prophecy that the gods are furious with him. He urges Creon to free Antigone before it's too late. Creon is outraged at Tiresias' advice, accusing him of taking a bribe. In retaliation, Tiresias tells him now it's too late. Creon will be punished by having his son <gasps> taken away from him. Creon realizes that Tiresias is serious and acts quickly to do as he advised. In the play's climax, a messenger arrives at the palace and announces that Heman killed himself after he found Antigone hanging from a noose in the cave. Creon had arrived at the cave just in time to witness his son's death, and he's inconsolable. Creon's wife Eurydice emerges from the palace to hear the messenger's story, then returns to the palace in silence. A distraught Creon returns, carrying Heman's corpse. The messenger emerges from the palace and informs Creon that Eurydice has killed herself. In the play's falling action, Creon is miserable, finally realizing he's brought all this tragedy on himself. In the play's resolution, the chorus sings an ode about the importance of obeying the gods and staying humble in order to gain wisdom.